Today's recipe can be made into a variety of desserts, from pudding to pie. And here to share that recipe in our CI Kitchen, from the Family to Table blog, Natalie Kenny Marquez. Okay, are we on a pudding kick? <laughs> we are. <laughs> I never thought I'd cook pudding three weeks in a row, but to my defense, the first two weeks of this pudding journey yes wasn't really pudding we had no. the steamed chocolate pudding. pudding and the uncooked date pudding last week well today is cornstarch pudding and i promise it's it's real okay actual pudding I, i'm not going to so lie confused. when when we heard that we were making cornstarch pudding it was like hmm, hmm. That sounds interesting. After this week, we'll get off the pudding kick, I promise. <laughs> oh, I'm not. I'm I have not, no problem with pudding. The cornstarch corn part made well, it sound and like And that's it. what makes it thick. It's like a homemade, old-fashioned oh. pudding. And so if you make pudding at home, you'll likely have some kind of thickening agent in there to get it to bind and thick up. up. Yeah. And that's what the cornstarch does in this case. And it is, yep. This that's looks nice. very simple. We have relatively few things on the counter here. Uh, we have the double boiler, which I'm, proud I'm that very you knew proud that I knew what, what that was. was. He can be taught. Yep, and then we have one and three quarters cup of whole milk in here warming up. And then we have an egg yolk, some okay. vanilla uh, in this bowl. And then we'll add it to this bowl, if you don't mind. Oh, sure, oh, yeah. I can do that. And so, the so there's no whites in, in here? We just we so put the white somewhere else? Yes, the white will reserve for later. And then in the, the dry bowl was sugar and cornstarch and salt. And so if you want to mix that together. Is this me? Yeah. You no, I'm not this? whipping it. I'm just mixing it. Just mixing it. Okay. Yep. So three ingredients, cornstarch, sugar, and salt there we're seeing on the screen. And, and an vanilla. Egg yolk. Oh, and, a v and some vanilla. Yeah. Okay. And then we'll add that to here. Oh, uh, how good does this have to be mixed just um, so I don't see the lumps? Probably a good idea. There will be a few lumps in there, but I'll whisk it out. There's always some lumps. Okay, tell me the story behind this, because we have her um, her recipe card there that we saw. Yep, so there's a couple of different recipes that she had for the cornstarch pudding, either in anticipation of making a banana pudding pie or to oh. make this basic vanilla version. You can stick it in uh. here. And it came from her Aunt Jane, which is actually my great-grandma Emmy Schwingle's Aunt Jane. And I've used some of her other recipes before, like the ham loaf that I made last year. Yeah. That was Aunt Jane's recipe. And there's a little note a few times where they say Aunt Jane was the best cook. So <laughs> it's kind of special. But this is an easy way to make uh, just basic vanilla pudding. You could add in some cocoa and a little extra sugar if you wanted to go with a chocolate pudding or banana to make the banana pudding, the filling for your pie. And so this just li literally sits here and warms up and then, then you cool it off and it's pudding? Yes. <laughs> it seems too good to be At true. At the very end, you have the option of putting in a beaten egg white. So when I had just the yolk in here, mm -hmm. the white is something you could beat into stiff peaks so it becomes very firm and then you fold it into the pudding. If you are against putting raw egg into it, you can <laughs> leave that part out, but it does give it kind of a fluffy whipped creamy um, mm. consistency, but it doesn't, in my opinion, keep in the fridge for very long. Okay, why use the double boiler? Why not just put it in the pan and stir? So you don't burn the milk. Oh. You don't want to scald the milk or have it, you know, tasting burnt. Okay. Uh, short story time. Uh, I remember when I was a kid, uh, <laughs> when I was high school, my friend and I were taking two girls to prom and we decided we were gonna make them dinner. And so we were making rolls and we, for the rolls, had to have just the yolk and not the white and two 17 year old boys no idea how to make that happen so we were like trying to like separate it separate it like on the fly as it was going to the bowl still don't know how to do this how do you do how do you make the separate is there a, there's got to be a simple way to do that uh well i, I crack it and mm -hmm. then i let kind of the white fall out a little bit mm -hmm. and then i pour the yolk into the other side and just keep going back and forth yeah, we wouldn't have been able to do that either, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I, although they do have like egg separators at kitchen yeah. gadget stores, but that's, oh. to me that's one more thing you have to clean. Yeah, and sure. who has enough space for that? Sorry, I can't do anything with my left yes, hand. No, you're, you're, trying trying to you're doing just my fine. Hand. Does it have to be a consistent stir? No, I just don't want it to burn on the bottom. Oh. And how long does this happen? Did you say already? About eight to ten minutes, okay. depending on how big of a double broiler you have and how high you have that. My water real concern is, are we going to get to try the pudding by the Oh, for sure. Okay. Right. Well, and I even have little sure. vanilla wafers to go with <laughs> oh, it. Oh, wow. Oh, even I'm better. Already. <laughs> All right, I'm sure some of these ingredients are at the farmer's market. Definitely the milk, definitely the eggs. So, okay. for sure. And there's a look at Natalie's Instagram, which, and her recipe is on sayliving.tv, as well as links to um, her website, which include the links to her Facebook and Instagram. So, then check it out. More links than you can shake a stick at. <laughs>